Welcome to this Pearson Edexcel GCSE Music Coursework Marking Training. In this pre-recorded event, we will be focusing on Component 1, Performing. In particular, how to mark your students' coursework submissions. We will be exploring the assessment grids and marking candidate responses. Pearson also provides training which covers Components 2 and 3. This training, today, aims to prepare teachers delivering Component 1 for submission in 2020. You will explore how the assessment criteria are applied, see examples of student work, mark these examples, and be made aware of common issues and answers to frequently asked questions. To complete this training, please ensure the following items from the download pack are to hand. Revised Specification, Performing Section, PAS Forms Booklet, Scores Booklet, Recordings of Performances, Difficulty Levels Booklet or Spreadsheet, Further Guidance for Ensemble Performance Document. Finally, a good quality amplifier and speakers are essential if you are to hear detail when marking performances. To begin, here is a brief introduction to GCSE Music Assessment. The principal moderator would like to thank and congratulate all centres who submitted students in 2019. Submissions were carefully prepared and comments made by teacher assessors on authentication sheets supported the moderation process. As always, there were many memorable and enjoyable performances. Here is an overview of the GCSE 9 to 1 music specification. It details the assessment structure for each of the three components, performing, composing, and appraising. Component 1, which we're looking at here, is in bold on the table. Performing is an NEA, non-examined assessment, unit. The teacher assesses the student work, and a sample of work from the centre is sent to the moderator. The moderator will check work is marked to national standards. Where marking has been carried out by more than one teacher in a centre, there must be a process of internal standardisation carried out to ensure that there is consistent application of assessment criteria. Students are required to submit both a solo and ensemble performance. These must each be at least one minute in duration. When combined, solo plus ensemble, the minimum duration is four minutes. Performances may consist of more than one piece. Each performance is marked out of 30. It is worth noting, the following do not count when measuring performance length. Verbal introductions, tuning up, gaps between pieces, and lead-in and lead-out time. The assessment objectives for this specification are provided in this table. A01 deals with performance. A02 deals with composition. A03 and A04 deal with listening and appraising. Following an Ofqual consultation last academic year, the Pearson Edexcel GCSE 9 to 1 music specification has been updated. The revised specification in full 
is available on the subject web page and is provided in the download pack. Let's have a look at the revisions made. The requirement to perform for a combined minimum of time, solo plus ensemble, of four minutes remains the same. However, performances that do not meet the minimum time requirement no longer receive zero marks. Instead, the mark will be proportionally reduced during moderation. Where combined time is less than four minutes, you should mark the work using the assessment criteria. You must not reduce the total mark because Pearson will apply the reduction during moderation. Centres will be required to inform Pearson of any students who do not meet the minimum time requirement of four minutes. Further guidance for combined time can be found on pages 9, 13 and 16 of the revised specification. The mark reduction table can be found in Appendix 9 of the revised specification. The mark is proportionally reduced depending on how many seconds the combined performance time is short of four minutes. For example, a student whose combined performance time is two minutes and is awarded a total mark of 48 will have their mark reduced by 50% to 24. As indicated earlier, teachers should not reduce the total student mark because Pearson will apply the reduction during moderation. Here are two further revisions. The statements made by students to introduce themselves and their instruments at the start of their recording are no longer required. For ensemble performances of two or more minutes, requirements will be met where the student's part is independent, undoubled and simultaneously sounding for at least one minute. For ensemble performances between one and two minutes, the majority of the student's part must be independent, undoubled and simultaneously sounding to meet requirements. For example, an ensemble performance of one minute and 40 seconds, consisting of 51 seconds of ensemble playing, meets requirements because the majority is ensemble performance. An ensemble performance of three minutes, consisting of 51 seconds of ensemble playing, does not meet requirements because there must be at least one minute of ensemble playing for performances lasting two or more minutes. Further guidance for ensemble performance can be found on page 10 of the specification. It is now a requirement that where a score or lead sheet exists, it must be submitted alongside the recording. Therefore, teachers will need to provide the moderator with a score where it is available. Where a score is available, and the student performance differs from the score because it has been learned from a professional recording, then this professional recording should be submitted alongside the score. It is particularly helpful if deviations made are annotated onto the score. If a score does not exist, then appropriate reference material must be submitted. This reference material will need to contain all the information necessary to assess the accuracy of the performance. For example, a guitar tab score with no indication of rhythm is unacceptable. Further guidance for score submission can be found on pages 15 and 16 of the specification. 
we will now look at assessing component 1. There are a number of differing approaches to performance. Performance from a score is the most common submission. Improvisation can be from a score or stimulus material. It is important that students exploit and develop material when selecting this option. Realising music using technology consists of performing using synthesizers, virtual instruments and amplified instruments such as guitar with the use of live filters and effects. The solo line may be performed over a pre-recorded or sequenced track. No mark is awarded for the pre-recorded or sequenced track. Only the student performance of the live solo line is assessed. When selecting material for beatboxing and rapping, for which the difficulty level is not published, Guidance can be found on pages 24 and 25 of the specification. To achieve standard, two of the standard criteria will need to be met, for example. Students who perform their own composition must submit a suitable score. It will need to contain all the information necessary to assess the accuracy of the performance. For solo performance, students are advised to select repertoire in which there is a leading role. There is no restriction in choice of instrument and performances can be in any style. The solo performance must be at least one minute in duration and may consist of more than one piece. If performing more than one piece, the pieces must be performed together in an unedited recording. You are reminded that gaps between pieces do not contribute to performance length. You are reminded that an ensemble performance lasting two or more minutes must contain at least one minute where the student's part is independent, undoubled and simultaneously sounding. For ensemble performances between one and two minutes, the majority of the student's part must be independent, undoubled and simultaneously sounding. Performances that contain three or more undoubled, simultaneously sounding and independent parts are considered to meet requirements. A solo with an accompanist, such as a singer, with guitar accompaniment, does not meet ensemble requirements for the soloist. However, the accompaniment part does qualify for ensemble performance. A backing track may be used in ensemble performance, but it does not count as one of the independent parts. The ensemble requirements on this slide match those for solo performance. There is no restriction to choice of instrument or style. Ensemble performance must be at least one minute in duration and may consist of more than one piece. If performing more than one piece, the pieces must be performed and recorded together. Let's listen to some student work and mark it using the assessment grids. GCSE performance is moderated via a recording, so it is important that students create a recording that accurately reflects their skills. It is worthwhile doing practice recording throughout the course so that the student becomes aware of how well they communicate and how they can improve. Working on dynamic range, clarity of articulation, shaping of musical phrases and tone quality will always help. Whilst the quality of recording submitted is not assessed, 
it is clearly important for the student that the quality is good enough to reflect their achievements. Explore venues for recording. Where is the best space to use in your school? Use a good quality external microphone such as a condenser microphone. Ensure that any auto-leveling is switched off on the recording device. Auto-leveling automatically adjusts the recording level in real time. This will impact on the ability to assess phrasing, dynamic contrast, and also balance in ensemble performance. Marking is more accurate when a performance is listened to more than once. For example, accuracy may be assessed during the first listen and interpretation during the second. Allow yourself time between each listen to evaluate and assess the performance against the assessment criteria. Please pause this presentation when instructed. This will provide you with time to mark exemplar work. Resume once you have assessed the performance. Most difficulty levels for solo performances will be found in the difficulty levels booklet or spreadsheet, especially if pieces have been used for graded exams. If the piece has been listed in a graded exam syllabus, but is not in the booklet or spreadsheet, then award the difficulty level at the grade indicated in that syllabus. Those pieces not listed in the difficulty levels booklet or spreadsheet and graded exam syllabuses, both solo and ensemble, should be compared to similar pieces found in the booklet or spreadsheet when awarding the level. The Difficulty Levels Further Guidance for Ensemble Performances document can be used to help award a level for both solo and ensemble performances where the level is not published. This guide provides criteria for a range of instruments at standard level, grade 4, for GCSE. If the majority of criteria are met, then the piece is standard. If the majority are not met, then the piece is less difficult. If the majority are beyond standard, then the piece is more difficult. Difficulty levels are built into Assessment Grid 1 for less difficult pieces. Assessment Grid 1 can be found on pages 19 and 20 of the specification. Marks are capped in Assessment Grid 1 by the difficulty level awarded. For pieces awarded difficulty level 2, the maximum mark that can be achieved is 6. For difficulty level 1, the maximum is 4. And pre-difficulty level 1, the maximum is 2. Difficulty levels are also applied through the difficulty levels grid. The difficulty levels grid can be found on pages 25 and 26 of the specification. A perfect performance of a difficulty level 4 standard piece will achieve 30 out of 30 after scaling. A perfect performance of a difficulty level 3 less difficult piece will achieve 24 out of 30. However, a difficulty level 5, more difficult piece, that is awarded 20 out of 24 against the assessment criteria, would achieve 30 out of 30 after scaling. The difficulty level is awarded as a whole. If two pieces form a performance, it is awarded one difficulty level. You will apply a difficulty level to the whole performance based on an average, although taking into consideration the relative length of pieces where these lengths are unbalanced. You will mark an example of this later. 
performances are assessed using the assessment grids to meet assessment objective one. The performance assessment grids can be found on pages 19 to 23 of the revised specification. Each assessment grid contains several descriptors. Each descriptor, as appropriate, is considered when awarding the mark for the assessment. Descriptors have equal weighting. Assessment Grid 1 contains three descriptors in each level. The first descriptor assesses technical control. The second, control of the demands. And the third, tone quality and intonation. Use of filters and effects are assessed in realizing music performances using music technology. Assessment Grid 2 contains three descriptors for solo performance and four descriptors for ensemble in each level. The first descriptor assesses tempo, the second dynamics, phrasing and articulation, the third musical communication, and the fourth is applied to balance in ensemble performance. Assessment Grid 3 contains four descriptors. Two descriptors are usually applied to solo performance and three for ensemble. The first descriptor assesses accuracy in pitch and rhythm. The second, fluency. And the fourth strand, ensemble reaction. For improvisations, the third descriptor is assessed for accuracy and development. If the assessment grids are unfamiliar to you, do take some time to look through them. As there are several descriptors per level, levels-based marking will apply. Mark schemes for non-examined assessment for both performing and composing are levels-based. For performing, the assessment grids consist of four levels. Each level has a lower and upper mark with a maximum of eight for each assessment grid. When finding the correct level for a response, a best fit approach is used to decide the level that most closely describes the quality of the performance. Performances can display characteristics from more than one level. Teachers must then use their professional judgment to decide the most appropriate level. The top mark should be awarded for work that is as good as can be realistically expected within that level. The bottom mark of the level is used for work that is the weakest that could be expected at that level. Where one or some requirements are met above the best fit level, then the top mark within the level should be awarded. Similarly, when one or some requirements are met below the best fit level, then the lower mark should be awarded within the level. For example, a performance demonstrates excellent control and the piece is well within the control of the performer with excellent tone throughout. However, there are one or two occasions where there are slips in intonation, yet this was generally good. The majority of descriptors are in the level 4 box for grid 1. However, intonation is in level 3 box. The overall mark is 7 as a best fit. Let's mark the first piece. It is an ensemble performance of Caprice for clarinets, composed by Claire Grundmann. The second clarinet is the part to be assessed. To complete this assessment, you will need the following from the download pack. 
Performance 1 audio track, the scores booklet, page 1, assessment grids 1 to 3 and difficulty levels grid, found on pages 19 to 26 of the specification, and the difficulty levels further guidance for ensemble performances document. During this first listen, place the work in the correct box for each of the assessment grids, level 1, 2, 3 or 4, rather than marking each grid out of 8. You may wish to listen to the recording more than once as you work through the assessment grids. Clarinet 2 is the performer who squeaks. These squeaks should be factored into your assessment. The correct levels are presented on the next slide. Please pause this presentation. Resume once you have assessed this performance. Level 4 for each of the assessment grids is the most suitable box for the second clarinet's performance of Caprice for Clarinets. Let's listen to Caprice for Clarinets a second time and refine the assessment. The difficulty level for this piece is not published. It is not listed in the difficulty levels booklet or in a graded exam syllabus. Whilst the piece should be compared to solo pieces in the difficulty level booklet, it is best in this instance to establish its difficulty level by using the Difficulty Levels Further Guidance for Ensemble Performances document. This document contains a guide of features for instrumental groups for standard at GCSE and standard at A level. If all listed features are fully met in the A-level column, then the piece will be more difficult at GCSE. Where the majority of features are beyond standard in the GCSE column, the difficulty level is also more difficult. Where the majority of features are at standard in the GCSE column, the difficulty level is standard. And where the majority of features are not met in the GCSE column, this indicates that the difficulty level is less difficult. Where less difficult is indicated, or the difficulty level is inconclusive, then the piece should be compared to those pieces listed in the difficulty levels booklet or graded exam syllabuses. The given features are for guidance, and other features in the performance can be factored in when awarding difficulty levels. During this assessment, alongside awarding the difficulty level, provide a mark within the Level 4 box for each of the assessment grids. As you are marking using a levels-based mark scheme, Assess whether requirements have been fully met or if there are elements of the performance that are at the bottom of the box. Consider each of the relevant strands. Once you have marked each of the assessment grids out of eight, add these together to form the raw mark. Next, scale the raw mark based on the difficulty level you have awarded by using the difficulty levels grid to form the total mark. The difficulty levels grid can be found on pages 25 and 26 of the specification. Remember to time the length of performance. Performance time is measured from the start of the first note to the end of the last. You may wish to listen to the recording more than once. The difficulty level, marks and length are presented on the next slides. Please pause this presentation. Resume once you have assessed this performance. 
The difficulty level for caprice for clarinets is more difficult. Where the piece is beyond the listed feature for standard at GCSE, it can be annotated with a plus. If it meets the feature, an equals, and where the feature is not met, a minus. For feature 1, there is a very large range of 2.5 octaves. Therefore, this feature is beyond standard at GCSE and is awarded a plus. There are also some awkward intervals, for example at letter B. Feature 2 is also beyond standard at GCSE. There is some variety in rhythmic patterns, including syncopation. The piece meets standard for the third feature and is awarded an equals. Dynamic contrasts are detailed and require shaping, and there is a wide range of articulation required, including use of accents, slurs, staccato and tenuto. Therefore, feature 4 is beyond standard. Breath control, feature 5, is marginally beyond standard at GCSE. And the line is often exposed with frequent interplay making the final feature beyond standard. In addition, the piece is made more challenging by changes in tempo and gradation of tempo. Whilst the meter changes, this does not contribute beyond standard in this instance. Any additional features not listed in the difficulty levels further guidance for ensemble performances document may be considered when awarding difficulty levels, particularly where the difficulty level is borderline. Do annotate additional features considered on the performance authentication sheet to inform the moderator of your thought process. For assessment grid 1, although there are two squeaks, control overall is convincing for descriptor 1. There are minor slips in intonation at letter J, which detract slightly from descriptor 3. Overall, these technical slips place the mark at the bottom of level 4 for assessment grid 1 despite the demands of the music being well within the ability of the performer. For assessment grids 2 and 3, the descriptors are met in full. Maximum marks at the top of level 4 are awarded. For assessment grid 3, descriptor 3 is not assessed, of course, because the performance is not improvised. Raw marks are therefore 7 plus 8 plus 8, which equals 23 out of 24. Using the difficulty levels grid found on pages 25 to 26 of the specification, the raw mark of 23 is scaled up to 30 out of 30 for a more difficult performance. The length of caprice for clarinets is measured at 2 minutes and 27 seconds. Now it is time to assess the second performance. This solo keyboard performance consists of two pieces, high wire and Mediterranean breeze. To complete this assessment, you will need the following from the download pack. Performance 1 audio track. The scores booklet, pages 2 to 4. Assessment grids 1 to 3. And difficulty levels grid, found on pages 19 to 26 in the specification. And difficulty levels booklet, or spreadsheet. 
Where a performance consists of more than one piece, the performance is assessed as a whole rather than marking the pieces separately, then averaging their marks. Both of these pieces are listed in the Difficulty Levels booklet and spreadsheet. Use one of these documents to find the difficulty level for each piece. Guidance for awarding difficulty levels for performances that contain more than one piece can be found on page 25 of the specification. This time, complete the whole assessment. Mark each assessment grid and add these marks together to form a raw mark. Scale this raw mark using the difficulty levels grid to form a total mark and remember to time the performance. As there are two pieces performed, the gap between the two pieces does not contribute when measuring length. There is a lot to consider in this performance. You may find that you will need to listen to it or sections of it several times to mark it accurately. The difficulty level, marks and length are presented on the next slides. Please pause this presentation. Resume once you have assessed the performance. High wire and Mediterranean breeze are listed at difficulty level 4 and level 3 respectively in the difficulty levels booklet and spreadsheet. The specification states on page 25, if a student has chosen to perform more than one piece of music for either their solo or ensemble performance, the teacher assessing must apply a difficulty level to the whole performance based on an average, although taking into consideration the relative length of pieces where these lengths are unbalanced. In this performance, the pieces are at a different difficulty level. Therefore, an average level is applied based on the relative length of each piece. As high wire is the longer of the two, difficulty level 4 is awarded. Marks awarded for this performance of high wire and Mediterranean breeze demonstrate well the process of levels-based marking. The two pieces are marked as a whole. For assessment grid 1, the first descriptor falls into the level 3 box because technical control is basic rather than convincing. For example, right-hand fingering of quaver patterns is sometimes uneven in high wire. High wire is felt to be slightly beyond the performer, the odd fill is omitted. Also, technique fails in the final few bars. Therefore, level 3 is appropriate for descriptor 2. The third descriptor, sonority, is awarded level 4. It is convincing throughout. This is demonstrated through controlled variance in tone through patch changes. Therefore, two descriptors fall into the level 3 box and one is in the level 4 box. The majority fall into the level 3 box. This indicates that the mark should be in the level 3 box. As one of the descriptors meets level 4 requirements, the overall mark will be at the top of the level 3 box, 6 marks. For assessment grid 2, tempo is appropriate and consistent throughout, so level 4 is awarded. The performance is well shaped. However, opportunities are sometimes missed. For example, the crescendo in bar 6 of Mediterranean Breeze is omitted. The performance meets level 3 requirements for the second descriptor. For the third descriptor, the performance has some unsuccessful moments, but communicates well overall. Therefore, it demonstrates some involvement and meets level 3 requirements. As the performance is not an ensemble, 
Descriptor 4 is not assessed. Similar to Assessment Grid 1, two descriptors are in the Level 3 box, with one fulfilling Level 4. Therefore, the mark for Assessment Grid 2 is 6, top of the Level 3 box. Assessment Grid 3. The performances contain many noticeable errors in both pitch and rhythm. For example, the last note of the first line is sustained through the rest, and there are incorrect pitches in bars 12, 22 and 29, and incorrect chords at the end of high wire. As these errors have little impact on success, the performance meets level 2 requirements for the first descriptor. There is a loss in coherence in the final two bars of Mediterranean Breeze, so the level 3 descriptor is most appropriate. As the performance is neither an ensemble nor improvised, descriptors 3 and 4 are not assessed. Overall, the first descriptor is in the level 2 box, and the second descriptor is level 3. Due to many mistakes, the overall level is felt to be 2. The second descriptor in level 3 box indicates that the mark will be top of the level 2 box. Four marks are awarded. The raw marks are therefore 6 plus 6 plus 4, which equals 16 out of 24. Using the difficulty levels grid found on pages 25 to 26 of the specification, the raw mark of 16 is scaled up to 20 out of 30 for a standard level 4 performance. Comments made on the PAS section displayed on this slide are an example of good practice. They go beyond the wording of the assessment grids to indicate why marks have been awarded for assessment grids 1 and 3. Gaps between pieces do not contribute towards performance length. High wire is 1 minute 48 seconds from the start of the first note to the end of the last. And Mediterranean breeze is 1 minute 40 seconds. Combined performance length is therefore 3 minutes 28 seconds. Let's move on to performance three, a trombone ensemble performance of summertime. To complete this assessment, you will need the following from the download pack. Performance three audio track, the scores booklet, page five, assessment grids one to three and difficulty levels grid, found on pages 19 to 26 in the specification. You will also need access to the internet to research graded exam syllabuses. Complete the whole assessment. Mark each assessment grid and add these marks together to form a raw mark. Scale this raw mark using the difficulty levels grid to form a total mark and remember to time the performance. The difficulty level, marks and length are presented on the next slides. Please pause this presentation. Resume once you have assessed the performance. Summertime is listed for trombone in Trinity's 2019 to 2022 brass syllabus at grade 5. Therefore, the difficulty level is 5, more difficult. For assessment grid 1, technique is sometimes controlled, but is mostly limited. Requirements for level 2 are met for the first descriptor. The piece is beyond the performer in the upper register, so level 2 for descriptor 2. Sonority is often thin and sometimes coarse. Intonation is often limited but not poor throughout. 
The correct box for descriptor 3 is borderline level 1 to 2. As the majority of requirements are met at level 2, this indicates the mark should be in the level 2 box. As one descriptor is borderline level 1 to 2, the overall mark will be at the bottom of the level 2 box, that is, three marks. For assessment grid 2, level 3 requirements are met for the first descriptor, tempo. Whilst many of the tempo markings are not followed, the vast majority of these are beyond control of the student. Phrasing is limited. Some dynamic shaping is missed and articulation is not always observed, so level 2 requirements are met for descriptor 2. At times, the performance struggles to communicate. Level 2 requirements are therefore met for descriptor 3. Ensemble balance is maintained throughout and is therefore good. Level 3 requirements are met for descriptor 4. Therefore, two descriptors are in the level 2 box and two are in level 3. This indicates the mark is either at the top of level 2 box or bottom of level 3. Overall, a mark of 4 was felt to be most appropriate. The performance contains noticeable errors in both pitch and rhythm. For example, long notes are often cut short. Pitch in bar 22 is incorrect and rhythm in bar 28. These errors do not impact on overall success and much of the piece is accurate. Level 2 is appropriate for the first descriptor for assessment grid 3. The performance is mostly coherent, so level 3 is met for descriptor 2. For descriptor 4, the ensemble is mostly maintained, although there is occasional difficulty. That's level 2. Descriptor 3 is not assessed because the performance is not improvised. Therefore, two descriptors are in the level 2 box and one is in level 3. This indicates the mark is top of level 2, that is, four marks. The raw marks are 3 plus 4 plus 4, which equals 11 out of 24. Using the difficulty levels grid found on pages 25 to 26 of the specification, the raw mark of 11 is scaled up to 17 out of 30 for a more difficult level 5 performance. Again, comments made on the section of the PAS displayed on this slide demonstrate good practice. Comments go beyond the wording of the assessment grids to indicate why marks have been awarded for each assessment grid, with reference to bar numbers. The length of summertime is measured at 2 minutes and 25 seconds. Performance 4, a solo performance of Noisy Neighbour on drum kit. To complete this assessment, you will need the following from the download pack. Performance 3 audio track, the scores booklet, pages 6 and 7, Assessment Grids 1 to 3 and Difficulty Levels Grid, found on pages 19 to 26 in the specification, and Difficulty Levels Booklet or Spreadsheet. Complete the whole assessment. Mark each assessment grid and add these marks together to form a raw mark. Scale this raw mark using the Difficulty Levels Grid to form a total mark, and remember to time the performance. The difficulty level, marks and length are presented on the next slides. Please pause this presentation, resume once you have assessed the performance. 
noisy neighbour is listed at difficulty level 4 in the difficulty levels booklet and spreadsheet. Despite noisy neighbour appearing in Rock School's drum syllabus, the difficulty levels booklet or spreadsheet should be referred to first. For this performance of Noisy Neighbour, Level 3 requirements are met for the first descriptor in Assessment Grid 1. This is because coordination is not always convincing. For example, semiquavers are uneven in bar 15. The piece is beyond the performer at letter C and the kick becomes slightly uneven. The second descriptor is also in the Level 3 box. Sonority is well controlled throughout with effective tonal contrast. Therefore, descriptor 3 is in the level 4 box. Overall, with two descriptors in the level 3 box and one in level 4, the upper mark of 6 is awarded in the level 3 box. For assessment grid 2, tempo is appropriate and consistent throughout. The level 4 requirements are met for the first descriptor. The performance is generally well phrased, although dynamic contrasts could be more pronounced. There is some involvement with the music, however it does not communicate very well overall. For descriptors 2 and 3, level 3 requirements are met. As the performance is not an ensemble, descriptor 4 is not assessed. Overall, with one descriptor in the level 4 box and two in level 3, again six marks is the best fit. The performance contains some noticeable errors, including bar 18, missed crash symbol at letter C, kick drum in bar 19, and the snare in bar 26. These errors are noticeable, but have little impact on success overall. Level 2 is the best fit for Descriptor 1 in Assessment Grid 3. Despite these errors, the performance is coherent and fluent throughout. Level 4 requirements are met for Descriptor 2. As the performance is neither an ensemble nor improvised, Descriptors 3 and 4 are not assessed. However, if the opportunity to develop the music at bar 27 had been taken, credit would be applied to the third descriptor to the student's advantage. With one descriptor in the level 2 box and one in level 4, a best fit approach is applied. In this case, it was felt a mark of 6 was the best fit. Raw marks add up to 18 out of 24. Using the difficulty levels grid, the raw mark of 18 is scaled up to 23 out of 30 for a standard level 4 performance. Comments made on the PAS section displayed on this slide are an example of good practice particularly the references to bar numbers. The length of Noisy Neighbour is measured at 1 minute and 50 seconds. Length is measured from the start of the track's pre-recorded announcement and count-in to the end of the last note. The recorded track is longer than 1 minute 50, but the reverb tail at the end of the last bar does not count towards performance length. The following slides include key points taken from the Principal Moderator's Report. The Principal Moderator's Report can be found in the Download Pack. As indicated when marking the exemplars, Difficulty levels should be awarded using publications in the order indicated on this slide. 
do take time to familiarise yourself and students with revised requirements. Students who select over-ambitious repertoire or pieces that are too long tend to self-penalise. As the revised specification requires submission of a score where one is available, do take time to ensure that scores submitted enable assessment of accuracy. Do select ensemble repertoire with care, especially for singers. As per Exemplar 2, if a performance contains more than one piece, perform and record these together in one unedited track. The assessment of intonation is often applied to the wrong assessment grid. Comments about the student's balance in ensemble performance particularly assist the moderator. Do assess errors against the score meticulously. Examples in this training indicate how to comment beyond the assessment grid wording to support marks you award. A surprising number of teacher assessors are reluctant to award full marks, particularly for assessment grid 3. To close, we will look at admin issues, the support available, and next steps. The following admin issues are identified in the Principal Moderator's Report. Do ensure you consult the 2020 Administrative Support Guide and submit work using updated 2020 authentication sheets. One USB stick or CD per component should suffice. Multiple USB sticks or CDs should not be submitted. It is helpful if solo is followed by ensemble on the CD as consecutive tracks. Do check guidance for submission of encrypted media. Here is a link to the subject's web page where the up-to-date administrative support guide and authentication sheets can be found. If you need any further help and support, please contact Geoffrey Hole, who is our subject advisor for music. Pearson are always seeking experienced teachers to work as assessment associates. For more details, please visit the link on this slide. This slide contains links to online services. Results Plus provides the most detailed analysis available for your student's exam performance. This free online service helps you identify topics and skills where students could benefit from further learning, helping them gain a deeper understanding of music. This is only available on the appraising element. Pearson publish a number of resources to support teaching of their qualifications. Other non-endorsed resources are available. Thank you for taking time to complete this Pearson EdXL GCSE Music coursework marking training. <laughs>